So welcome to part two of the Botanical Gel Printing Taster course. So in this part of the lesson we're going to be using real leaves to print on top of our Sheen Collet collaged um, papers that we created yesterday. So if you missed the first part of the lesson I'll put the link below and you can catch up with that one first. But our papers are all ready and I'm ready to start printing with these leaves now. Okay, so I've got my parlor palm leaves. I'm going to have a go at printing on top of my collage papers now. So I'm just going to take some of my colours, a little bit on the plate. I want a kind of mixture of colour. I'm sort of mixing on the plate as I go there. So I want this, some of the leaves that have got a nice gap between the leaves so that we can see the collage underneath. I'm going to choose these two. Maybe a little one up here, just the edge of it. One over here. Okay, so I'm going to try try this one first. So I'm going to just place it carefully on top, try not to bend the leaves. Now I'm going to take one of my dry rollers and I'm going to press over the top quite hard to try and get in between all those leaves. I'm picking up all the paint round about the leaves. Working from the middle out, try not to disturb it. Just going to give it a smooth with my hand as well. Make sure it's completely suctioned down there. Pulling that up now. See what we we'll get. So that's really nice. So you can see. The shape of the leaves and the text coming through. So that's number one. So we'll see. I'm going to use this piece of paper behind me. I'm just going to pull up this print so we can use that for something else. So. Nothing ever gets wasted. These will be chopped up and used for other parts of collage. So I'm going to try a bit darker this time, I think. Just put a bit of the, maybe some of that gold. Pretty much. So I'm going to try a different leaf this time. Okay, I'm going to try that one on top of the craft paper, see. Now this one works. So gently push it out. Oh, that one worked out really nice. I like the scale of that smaller one in the middle and these. So there's quite a lot of interest going on in this one. I like that sort of lighter tone down here. So I think once we put the viewfinder on top of this, we'll find quite a nice area for the finished print, perhaps. So that's a, one success, I think. Um, for instance, in this one here, I've got the sort of square format down this way, or maybe the... 
portrait format. So it depends on what kind of frame you've got, how we can use these. But these certainly do help to see a composition within a composition, having these viewfinders. So that's what we'll be doing tomorrow, how to use these papers and how to frame them up and what to do with the extra bits. So I'll be doing that with you tomorrow. So I'm just going to carry on and finish these the rest of the pages that I've got here. So I'm going to take some of that. Try this handmade paper. Feels lovely to touch. Picked, a, picked this paper up in a, a beautiful little shop in Stromness and Orkney that does handmade papers. So, this is the first time I've had a chance to try and use it. Every paper reacts slightly differently to the paint and the pressure, so it's interesting to try different papers, how they work. Oh, I love these dots coming through, that's nice. And the viewfinder. I think I like the square better. The camera kind of died on me there a minute ago, but what I did was I just pulled the comb through the paint before I put the, the leaf down, but I think it just got a bit too um, mixed up, too much going on. So further the flatter areas of paint, I think. Yeah, that's nice. I like that one. Not so sure about the sharp line there, but I'd probably do something to kind of blend that out the paint. Pretty cool. I love that sort of ripped line coming down here. Yeah, got possibilities. So you can see how many variations you can get with just repeating the same, same colours, same plants, and just with slight different compositions. So sometimes it's best to keep things simple and not try and do too many colours, too many plants, and that's when you get the. Um, better results.
this one here. To make my botanical nails. <laughs> I got them done for the course. And a detail if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I've ruined your lovely artwork. It does wash off though. I think it's getting a little bit lost in the middle here but what I would do is go back in and define these areas and darken them you know so we can work back into these I love that pink pinky sort of um coppery color I was just having another look at these um pieces and I decided that I think some of these white areas could do with a very thin layer of a translucent color so what I did I tested it on here and just put a thin layer of paint over that just to sort of take away that the starkness of the white so I think that's what I'm going to do for these I'm going to apply a very thin layer of the gold so I want it just to be on the plate and no more because I don't want to cover up everything but I just want Thin layer, like us using it like a glaze, really, just to kind of pull everything together. That will help just soften that white. A little bit of this, just like a pearly color, it's quite transparent. Middle section. Yeah, I think that's just kind of pulled it all together a little bit on that one. For this one here, what I might try and do is just have like a two-toned one. Quite a lot of paint on there, so I'm going to take some off. That's quite cool. I think it's just softened that harshness of that line as well. That was a bit problematic. Yeah, I'm definitely happier with these now. So uh, in tomorrow's lesson, we will be taking our prints and making some finished pieces using ready-made frames and also some little cards. Right, so that's tomorrow's lesson. So I hope you've enjoyed the first two parts and the course opens tomorrow for the botanical jelly printing um, six week course so this is a lead up to it a little taster session for you giving you some sort of um, a taster as to what will be coming up in the course and the way that I work if it's something you enjoy if you like the way that I teach and um, so I'll put the link below so you can come in and have a look at the sales page 
and the price is there, everything's there, all the information, the supply list, so you know up front what the costs are going to be, because I know a lot of people like to know that before they decide on a course. And uh, the early bird price opens tomorrow, which is the 7th of April. Okay, so thanks for watching everybody. I will see you for the last part tomorrow and hopefully in the six-week course coming up. Okay, bye for now.